Michaela. Michaela Folks is a massage therapist of 14 years, owner of Still Point Massage on the east side of Providence, kettlebell instructor of seven years, and current wellness consultant, making health simple and accessible. Give it up for Michaela. This is about an hour discussion, but we're going to do it in seven minutes. Um, so essentially, one thing that I hear a lot of people struggle about is confusion around health. Um, why? What does one do? There's so many conflicting opinions. Um, I put this in because a lot of people complete um, connect aging with health. But what I want to talk about primarily is premature aging. So a lot of people freak out about the fact that lots of degenerative diseases are possible. So cancer, stroke, heart disease, things like that. And there's this opinion that it's, um, it's likely for them, regardless of what they do. So three main things we're going to talk about tonight that are going to prevent that are exercise, pharmaceutical grade supplementation, and low glycemic eating. Exercise is something that is not only a priority for your vanity, it is something that could be important for you to live longer. There's two main camps of exercise, strength training and cardiovascularly taxing exercises. Take notes if any of this matters. So four main movers for strength training, squats, push-ups, deadlifts, and pull-ups, okay? A lot of people go into the gym, they don't know what the heck to do. Essentially, you wanna maximize your time, and when you do those four movements, basically you are capitalizing on major muscle groups um, and helping your body work as a unit better. Cardiovascularly challenging exercises. Please do not do steady state cardio for an hour at the gym on the elliptical as you die slowly, losing muscle mass and retaining fat. If you're gonna do cardiovascularly challenging exercises, which you should do intervals, a lot of people are familiar with this. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Okay, next up. So pharmaceutical grade supplementation. There is a lot of conflict about supplements. A lot of people say, I eat a good diet. What does that mean? What the heck is a good diet? So eating lots of uh, organic fruits and vegetables is fabulous. Organic is great because it's less laden with chemicals and pesticides. There's incrementally more nutrition than in a conventionally grown piece of produce. The reason why supplementation is a priority is because our soil is depleted nutrient-wise. 100 years ago, an orange contained a certain amount of vitamin C. Today, we need to eat eight to nine to get the same amount. So. Supplementation is amazing. It does not replace a good diet, but pharmaceutical grade is the thing that's gonna make a difference between getting something generic off the shelf that's questionable in terms of what's in it, contamination, um, amounts of nutrients in a particular supplement, versus something that is consistent, that's pure, that's reliable, um, that has been checked. The reason why supplementation in this day and age is a priority is because of something called free radical damage. So free radicals are a result of living, frankly, breathing, digesting food, but also um, something we succumb to from stress, uh, overexposure to sun, smoking, alcohol, chemicals, again, in our food. Pharmaceutical grade supplementation is something basically which does not enable this to happen. So you intend to get an apple and you're actually getting an orange. What is on the label is in the bottle. What is in the bottle is on the label. And it's basically the difference between pizza and penicillin. Like you have a formulation that is consistent, that is, um, it's established, it's reliable. So a particular company that I love, use, nine years, USANA, um, and I'll just give a little toot shout out here. Um, they were in the Winter Olympics. A lot of Olympians and athletes use their products. And the medal count, they were basically number two. If you saw it was a country, they were number two after Russia, which is very exciting. So third up is low glycemic eating. So when people ha eat high glycemic foods, like donuts, very sorry, um, <laughs> things like this, tend to arise if this is the majority of the diet. So weight gain around the middle. And the whole thing with health, which I think is quite a compelling fact, is basically your outsides reflect your inside, okay? So there's a big push for vanity and health, which I think is a fantastic motivator. So what ends up happening when you eat something high glycemic, like a donut, basically what's gonna happen is your blood sugar is gonna spike, insulin's gonna be pumped out, and it's gonna make your body, uh, it's gonna make your blood sugar plummet below a happy margin. What are high glycemic foods? Most things that are white, frankly. White rice, pasta, potatoes, baked goods, things that are sugary. Um, so, 
when we eat high glycemic foods, what ends up happening is it's super stressful. So a lot of people are motivated because of their waistline. However, what ends up happening is, so insulin gets produced, which is great. It's this beautiful little vehicle that basically transports sugar into our muscles to be used for fuel. When we have too much, it has to pack it into fat cells. The thing that is detrimental additionally is what happens when there's higher amounts of insulin in the body. So inflammation, cortisol, this is something, there's something actually called type three diabetes nowadays, which has to do with Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, so a lot of people think to have this you know, happy waistline, they have to eat nothing, and that's not true. The biggest confusion tends to be about what kinds of carbohydrates, what are, what are low glycemic carbohydrates, and things that are whole grains, so barley, quinoa, buckwheat, um, beans, lentils, sweet potatoes, um, as well as kind of more obvious things in terms of vegetables, most fruits, um, meats, eggs, nuts. Um, and I will just give a little push, grass-fed beef. Why is that better? Because the corn is, the cow is being fed what it needs, which has less inflammation in its body, which gives you less inflammation in your body. Additionally, with eggs, going for omega-3s or something that helps lower inflammation in your body. And things like this result, not out of deprivation, but out of making an educated choice. So those three things are the ways out of the weeds. Exercise, pharmaceutical grade supplementation, low glycemic eating. When you miss any one of the three, there's gonna be a weakness in this chain. And the last slide is of an 84-year-old woman who's coming right up. Um, who lives these three things, those three things in particular. I know this woman, um, she hiked to the base camp of Mount Everest, so 100 miles at 84 years old because of what she does. It doesn't mean that she looks like she's 25. There are wrinkles on that woman's face. She is slightly shorter. She's slightly slower because we do have a life expectancy. But essentially, the whole goal with health is to be able to use what you have. So there you go.